that another time. Meanwhile, we got some degeneracy ahead of us. Lucario versus Diddy Kong is happening. And I haven't, I haven't seen Melvin in such a long time. I mean, he, well, then again, he, he hasn't come to Xeno in a long time. So, I mean, but last time, it, literally last time was Smash 4, and he was playing Diddy Kong. But now that his main got buffed, I know he's loving it. Yeah, Diddy's a much more different character than he was in Smash 4. But at least now he's a functional character. He's not keeping you in prison with his banana as heavily, but he still has respectable shield pressure. And he doesn't struggle to kill. He's got actually a fair amount of uh, hit confirms to go into stuff, from dash attack to nair to, of course, banana. Yeah, no, and that's, that's the thing. But we can't forget that Vivi is playing the most, the most combat character in the whole roster. Lucario. Bro, this is Ocean's Eleven, the character. <laughs> this is the heist. You give Vivi enough planning time, you give him enough room to breathe, boom, the win is his. You don't even know how it happened. Exactly. As we see Vivi trying to get back to stage, but you know what? You're really just feeding him rage at the moment. Oh, the forward smash is not going to do it. Vivi's moving so beautifully right now. Not going to confirm with this aura sphere. What he, <laughs> hey, we'll take the hit any day, man. Like, one thing we were talking about earlier with Vivi when he was on stream is that he stays hyper-mobile. Like, yeah. you know with his orders for canceling and Lucario's respectable movement options on the ground, like, he's going to stay moving. Let's see, where does that barrel pass? Yo, yo, I was thinking the same thing! I'm like, where'd it go? <laughs> that's, a, that's a, that was a side beat, right? Yeah. Yep, side force beat. bump. I was like, because we know that before those barrels could just, once they're off Diddy, they are unhinged. <laughs> Barrels unleash the movie 2019 coming to a theater near you because my god. It randomly generates the direction it's gonna fly, so we could just come right back. <laughs> and I'm sure VP knew that, but you know, another nevertheless taking the stock with that side B, and now Melvin has to has to make this comeback. But great aura sphere pressure. VV having a lot of stage control. And or we could just run up and just run up and did it! Alright. And one thing to note is that if you preemptively know that if your opponent is going to throw out a move to either space themselves out or something, they do extend their hurt box. So it is worth noting that sometimes you can run up and smash attack and it's going to work because you know. Cough, cough, light. <laughs> Ooh. Get hit by his phone up smash like 20,000 times. <laughs> Yo, we saw a really interesting interaction back there. The monkey flip it whiffed and the double team it whiffed. But... There's a bunch of things that could have happened there. From the Monkey Flip Kick activating the uh, the double team, or possibly the command grip just outright ignoring it. Because it's not a command, uh, command hit. Like, this matchup's got some intricacies to it. But I feel like we're not getting a chance to see because both these guys are just trying to swing. Yeah, man. These forward smashes are... <laughs> these forward smashes are hell right now. And, I'm, and they're both spacing each other out so that they're not actually getting hit by each other's forward smashes. If we notice, the, the only ones that really connected were the ones that led to the kill. As Aura Sphere puts Diddy up... Uh, Diddy. Puts Diddy in a disadvantageous position. I think it's just a matter that Nelvin's aware that he doesn't have any good approach options against a massive Aura Sphere in his path. And Vivi knows that as long as he doesn't get too aggro, like, the kill's gonna come to him. Like, he's just gotta play that patient game. And just like that. Oh, right. that was up there. Oh my god. You just explode, man. Yeah, man. I mean, what, 88%? You it's know, it's when, Lucario. When you're at two stocks, definitely explode. Great back from the banana drop, but he needs to find the kill confirm immediately. Because Lucario on last stock with the full amount of aura is nothing that you want to be to deal with. Forward smash is not going to do it. Beautiful DI by VV. It's from out deep, too, so, like, presumably the situation is going to kill if it happens again, but damn, it's not a good look for Melvin. No, it's not. It's he's just trying to rack his percent, but Melvin is so good at catching those up smashes. Like, VV trying to kite across the platforms, it's a nice idea. I like it because he's trying to stay, like, Entirely non committal. He doesn't want to press any button that he knows he's not going to get punished for. It. But this is Diddy Kong we're talking about. He still has a plethora of options anti air. Yeah, his mobility. His mobility is pretty good. You know, he has that monkey flip. He could just, just go from point A to point B immediately. That's Melvin with the beautiful backer. Catching him with the re with the monkey flip. The banana actually holding him in place. Oh, I thought, he was gonna, I thought we were going to see a spike. Hang hey, man. Not yet. Especially considering how wily Vivi's been with his movement. Like, we're not going to get any shenanigans like that so easily. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> I, I thought he was going for the backer, but Monkey, Monkey Flip did actually activate before that. 
And I am surprised that Melvin isn't going for any spikes, to be honest. Like when Lucario's off stage. I think he's just too risky because he's noticing he, he hasn't been able to catch Vivi without a jump yet. And you don't want to eat Aura Sphere to back air or up air. No, God, Like no. just putting yourself in that situation for no good reason. On top of that, trying to contest the hitbox for extreme speed is a bit more difficult than it looks. So you just wait for a poor landing, let your banana do the work for you, and get your hit to confirm yourself a win into game one. Yeah, man, gotta play it safe sometimes. That was actually a beautiful adaptation by Melvin. We noticed that, the, you know, in the first... The, the first two stocks really didn't swing his way, but he did come, he didn't, he didn't bring the comeback, stayed cool throughout the entirety of the game, and, you know, definitely clutched it out with those up smash reads. I know Vivi's feeling that one right now, man. I'm, I'm not seeing, is it me, or is Vivi not... I feel like he's not confirming as much as he normally does, you know? Yeah, and when you get hit by Vivi, it's like... It's well, the thing is, like, Diddy's able to run away. Diddy doesn't want to play. He knows what Lucario is capable of, and Melvin's just getting the hell out of there if he's not going to be able to mix. Like, Diddy doesn't have the same privileges that he did before. He's not able to just, like, go plus on any random hit. Mm -hmm. Melvin has to be very methodical with how he strings together his hits, and if he doesn't get something where he knows he can get a follow-up for, like, he's just taking that free damage and resetting the situation. Which I feel is a fine way to play. It's what managed to scrape his way through game one. But on the flip side of things, Lucario playing that game, it's going to be a lot easier for Vivi to find that hit that can lead it to something. He just needs to actually catch his opponent, who is rather fast and kind of small. Yeah, no, and I do like the fact that Vivi caught on to Melvin's, to, you know, to Melvin's air dodge. He just waited for him to do it and then punished him again with another grab, and now he's at 78%. This is huge for Vivi, as he, I'm pretty sure because of the results of the last game, he wants to hit the lead as fast as possible. Like, he just needs to make sure that Nelvin doesn't establish any stage presence like he managed to. Because even though Nelvin was very slowly chipping his way to victory in game one, it, it, he was the one who was saying, like, where all the interactions were taking place. Vivi was just forced to, to fly around until he found a landing. But even that was on Nelvin's call. Great back here. As I'm not even sure if he wanted to do the dash attack or not. But, hey, when you see the opportunity, you have to go for it. Forward smash read, not going to do it. And that's just another instance of Vivi staying free with his movement and why it's such a great aspect of him as a player. Like, he's keeping his options open because he knows that at any point Diddy can just change up how he wants to move around. Definitely. Ooh. I do like that he is trying to punish Monkey for though. He's putting himself in, an, in, a, in a position to actually do so, but Melvin is being tricky with him. <laughs> Not in forward smash. Never fails, man. Never fails. Well, I mean, it could be. Well, Space. true, true, true. If you get hit, if you get hit, it's never fair. I'm, I'm just saying, like, did he got to work for the money? <laughs> no, not yet. Definitely, definitely. Okay, and he is being super, super tricky with this movement, but Vivi's starting to catch on. He's starting to be a bit more patient and waiting for not what Melvin does, but what Melvin does after Vivi. Great forward smash. Unfortunately, not going to do it. All the barrels. Oh, but you have to be careful. Calmate, mi hijo. Calmate. Oh, up tilt, not gonna do it just yet. Melvin running into another Aura Sphere. Oh. Yeah, thankfully Rocket Barrel Pack is a fast enough move that lets Melvin get silly with his movement, but that's not gonna work out for him for long. He keeps on getting these little hits on Lucario. Like, that Aura Sphere is just gonna get bigger and bigger, and once its hitbox grows just a little bit more, Melvin can't move around as for free. Yeah, you're feeding him rage right now. But he is doing a good job of making this comeback. And I did like, uh, I want to point out that I did like how Melvin did use Rocket Browse to escape Vivi before. And he actually landed right at the end of the stage. So he know he definitely knows the distance of, the, of his Rocket Browse and how, you know, in terms of like how long he charges them. This Aura Sphere is no joke, all right? This Aura Sphere is taking souls. It's, it's kind of big. <laughs> just just, just kind of on the larger end. Just a tad. <laughs> just a tad. <laughs> As we see Melvin turn, Mel, Melvin turn up the pressure at this moment when he knows that he's only down one stop. Yeah, but Melvin was in this situation last game, too. And like yeah, he, true. Things weren't looking so hot for him, and then all of a sudden, one banana confirmed later, and he takes the game. Now, do we find ourselves in a similar situation? No, Melvin's going to have to establish a bit more uh, presence on the board before we can say so. Yeah, to be honest, I, I, do, think, I do see a game three incoming because Vivi is playing... Uh, 
He's he, he is playing more patient about this, so I do think that Vivi's gonna rack up a bit more damage before he dies. Don't give me that commentator's curse, Vivi. <laughs> I was waiting for oh, my god. Yeah, worst feeling. I'm not gonna do it just yet. That thing is becoming huge. No way! No way! No, no way! Nah, man. Okay. I'm about to say. Uh, the move is very dramatic, but it, it, it's not that good. Wow. Down tilt confirms. All right. But now Nelvin is the one in the hot seat. Sitting at 95 and counting. He's at the ledge. Did he Banana just fall in the bananas twice? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't disappear when you it doesn't disappear when uh when you hit it or something, right? Maybe he's something be, like that. He seems to be getting a bit more answers because now he's falling into the banana all the time here. Yeah, he's he, tripping at least like six or seven times in this last stock alone. Yeah, he wants to close it out, man. He wants to close it out. But what he's been doing has been working so far, so I think you should just kind of let yourself have that lead and be cognizant of what you of the lead that you have. <laughs> yeah, I know Vivi's gonna be kicking himself if he throws away a lead like this, but this this anti movement of his and these runaway options just aren't working out. And all of a sudden, look at the percentage that Nelvin managed to build back up. He's capitalizing on the fact that Vivi is doing a lot more. Oh, up there, gonna do it, and we do have a game three. You know, just like on the other side of things, Nelvin got, getting really antsy. He's hunting around for his opportunity to kill. You dove right into Aura Sphere. And you didn't hit Lucario on the way in. My man got hit by Orsfield like four times. He wanted to die. It was <laughs> he really wanted a game three. <laughs> I was like, goodbye, cruel world. But I mean, I think that both of these players are catching up, catching on to each other's plans. And I don't see, I don't really see a reason for a switch, man. I mean, both games came really, really close, and. You know, both of these players are never clutching it out, so. We are gonna take it to buy, uh, I don't know, Pokemon State. Two. Two. One, go. So, I'll be honest with you all. What I'm waiting for here is seeing who messes up first. Yeah, because I 100% agree. Game two started beautifully. Both players were staying incredibly patient. They were just waiting for like one little slip up in landings, and then they abused their opponents. And that sort of started going back and forth, almost like untying a knot. Where it's starting to go little bit by little bit. By the time we got to the end, it was all over the place. Yeah, no. And we do see actually both players actually playing a bit more aggressive in this game. My God, that was oh, what? Wait, wait, what? Sick. All right. Vivi pulled the trigger on his forward smash a bit too early, so he paid the price and ate some damage from rocket barrel packs. All right, but you know these players are going at it right now. They're punishing each other for every mistake that does. Oh my God, that that banana! Unfortunately, not getting that back here punish as as well as he wanted to. Is that back here weaker in this game? I feel like it is. It's not nearly as fast, and it's not as safe on block. Okay. All right. So once Diddy's got to commit a little bit harder. That's, in general, Diddy has to commit a little bit more with his options. Yeah, yeah. But that's not a bad thing. <laughs> Balance like, it. Like I said, this isn't the beast that we used to know, but he's functional now. Now you're just somebody that I used to know. All right. The side B is going to do it as BV has 121%. And now you got you got you got to think about what's going through Nelvin's head right now, man. This is game three. The pressure's on. He needs to make this comeback ASAP. Great up air catch, but not gonna do it just yet. I know that he wants a banana hit. Oh, I like that. Hoping that Vivi would flinch. And that's huge because, you know, Vivi really doesn't spot dodge. So at one point, he was like, you know what? He will. When people are at a higher at a higher percent, they do tend to get a little bit more antsy with, with their, you know, spot dodging and rolling. So that was a great option. And so Vivi, was that. <laughs> Vivi's been consistent with his options at the very least. Like, he's only getting antsy when he wants to kill. He doesn't get pressured in bad situations like that, which credit to him as a player. But I feel like Nelvin should have picked up on that by now and sort of recognized for the mix-up. So like one thing I, that we haven't seen from Nelvin at all in this game so far has been the command grab out of Monkey Flip. We've been seeing the kick, which has a very respectable hitbox and really good momentum behind it as a movement option. But like, we've been fighting Vivi and Shield a lot. You would think that a grab would respond to the block well. We saw it a bit last match, but you are right where we didn't see it uh, as much as as much as we could. Because with the times that he did do it, he did successfully land that move, which was you know which should have been indicated like, hey, like you know he's not really expecting this. He's gonna hold shield because he's expecting him to do a flip kick, which is great conditioning on Melvin's part, you know. 
Oh, the banana grab, back throw, nice. Putting, getting him off stage, putting him in this advantageous position. But and what? Beautiful read. All right, I, was, I thought that was us smashed, and then <laughs> it looked like us smashed, but it ended up being forward smash. <laughs> it's the late duff. Right? Great option coverage. Oh, not. I feel like Melvin had it again. Yeah. But then he hesitated. Yeah, yeah, he rolled back too far. And now this is this is the high pressure situation that Vivi's just been thriving off of, where his opponents are getting antsy, so they're letting him live a little bit longer. Vivi knows he just needs one little hit, where his opponents have to solve like a puzzle before they find their hit. Uh, the really? Monkey, he exploded. Really strong like, aura. Oh my god. Good amount of rage. That percentage may not have been as high as it was earlier, but it's still plenty to be able to knock out. Yeah, no, you got to think in that situation. If you are Vivi, you you are you are you know cooler than than your opponent because you're like, eh, I get, I got a lot to work with, you know. And if you're an, if you're an opponent, and if you're an opponent, you're like, well, if I get touched, I'm gonna die. Help, <laughs> you know. Well, I mean, think of it. Think of what's going on with Vivi's side of the board right now. He's charging projectiles as large as his opponent. He's able to move around freely. As large as his opponent. <laughs> yeah, you're not, you're you're not wrong, though. You're not wrong, though. That's the funny part. As long as he doesn't get caught out by, like, the wayward monkey flips or, like, panic banana options, Vivi's cruising on his way to winning. Yeah, and he is reading the monkey flip a lot more now. And that's something that, you know, it's just Diddy. Diddy's opt to, opt to use monkey flips to recover because it's a huge, it's a very good option. You know, and they opt to do it when, they, when they're pretty high. So I like that Vivi is catching on to that. I mean, this this is just a classic habit of Diddy throughout the ages. Yeah, You're yeah. You see yeah. the monkey flip, monkey flip neutral is just how it goes. We've we've seen that at the lowest levels of Diddy's. We've seen it at the highest levels of Diddy's. Like after a while, you start to see that rhythm of approaching with the banana in hand, back air or forward air, and of course the monkey flip. You catch on to that pattern. All of a sudden, the movement options become really linear, and that's where Vivi shines when he catches on and he does something with that information. Yeah, but you know what we haven't seen? We haven't seen, we haven't seen a fully charged aura sphere from Vivi yet. We've seen all the, the command grab. Not going to do it just yet. But I like how Vivi is keeping the aura sphere small for the movement option. But, you know, throwing a full one his way is, you know, that's, that, that'd be a pretty good option, too. Because you have to shield it. You have... Or, you're not going to spot dodge, because you, you don't want to take the chance of that happening. There you go, as I call it out! It's like BB hurt. Call me Caster Domus, boys. <laughs> oh my god, and the... Oh, oh. with the pop-up? Preemptive pop-up? Okay, buddy. Oh my god, I know... Everyone's VB's getting out of their chairs. I know VB's kicking himself for that one, man. Like, watch how dramatically the uh, tightness levels rise in this one hit. Damn. Once we get to the replay. Because right here is just monkey neutral. <laughs> he just exploded. He really does. He just. I think we're playing. No. But you don't see him die. <laughs> he's just. He's just not there. <laughs> okay. Watch exploding monkey. Part two. Comes down. Yeah. I, you don't see the. You don't see him on the screen at all. The fully charged aura sphere. That thing is massive. Yeah, it's big. You see Vivi kicking himself throughout the match. He knows he wasn't happy with his play there. No, that's that is super unfortunate. He did uh he kind of just got hit by that by that unfortunate banana. Trying to trying to move, you know? Because one of the things that Vivi doesn't really do in terms of his movement, shield. Like oh, yeah. when he it's kind of like Venya-esque in the sense that because he's, you know, be reversing aura sphere a lot and kind of just jumping around, you know, landing with Nairs, uh, Doing all this Lucario stuff, uh, which is really great for movement, he can forget to shield sometimes. And 